Today's video is sponsored by War Thunder. Georgia is home to about 10.7 million people, making it the eighth largest state by population. But despite this, nearly 60% of the state's entire population lives within the Atlanta metropolitan region, an area just a little over 10% of the state's entire area size. This has left the rest of the state, including a seemingly valuable coastline, feeling pretty empty. So why don't more people live in southern Georgia, and why isn't there a major city on its coastline? Welcome to Geography by Jeff. Today we're off to explore the population distribution of the U.S. state of Georgia. Because while most of its people live in the metro area of Atlanta, the entire state has a fascinating geography and history that helps explain why the majority of Georgians live in the Atlanta area. But first, this week's podcast episode is all about the U.S. state of Hawaii. Journey with us as we talk about what Hawaii was before it was annexed, and why the state is, geographically, very unique within the country. You can watch that episode right here on YouTube or listen on whatever app you prefer. All links are in the description below. Long before European settlers set foot on what is now the US state of Georgia, the region was inhabited by a variety of indigenous tribes, each with their own distinct societies. These tribes, deriving from the ancient Mississippian culture, included the Creek, Cherokee, and Seminole, and played a crucial role in the state's early history. And contrary to beliefs that these tribes led relatively simple lives, each tribe engaged in complex systems of agriculture and trade with each other, and eventually, European settlers. But the creation of Georgia as a colony under British rule in the early 1700s marked a pivotal moment in the region's history. Named in honor of King George II of Great Britain, Georgia was the last of the original 13 colonies to be established. Its founding in 1732 by James Oglethorpe and a group of settlers at Savannah was driven by a mix of philanthropic, economic, and defensive motives. Oglethorpe originally envisioned Georgia as a haven for the poor and financially persecuted of England, but that dream never really materialized. Instead, Georgia's birth was motivated by the perceived need for a buffer region to protect the more prosperous colonies of Virginia and the Carolinas from Spanish incursions from Florida. Georgia's journey to statehood was intertwined with the broader struggle of American independence and nation building. Initially reluctant to join the movement for independence from British rule due to being relatively remote and vulnerable, Georgia eventually became a significant battleground during the Revolutionary War. The state's strategic location and economic value made it a focal point of conflict between British and American forces. The war's end saw Georgia become the fourth state in the United States, with its admission to the Union on January 2nd, 1788. After the American Revolution, Georgia quickly became one of the dominant states in the South. But it was also during this time that Georgia was forced to relinquish its western land, which became part of the Mississippi Territory in 1804, and later formed the state of Alabama in 1819. During this time, large cotton plantations prevailed inland, and rice farming thrived along the coast. The plantation economy led to an increase in the enslaved population, while the native Cherokee were forcibly relocated to Oklahoma in the last two decades before the Civil War, of which Georgia was firmly part of the Confederacy. According to reports, nearly 120,000 Georgians fought for the Confederate Army, though about 5,000 also joined the Union. Upon surrender, Georgia rejoined the United States and quickly transformed itself from a state wholly devoted to the plantation economy to become the industrial power for the South. Today, Georgia often sets the tone for what it means to be culturally Southern. And a large part of that is due to the unique geographic position the state has found itself in. But before we get to the physical geography of Georgia, if you're enjoying this video, hit that subscribe button. More fun geography videos are just a single click away. Once again, Today's episode is sponsored by War Thunder, the most comprehensive vehicle combat game you'll find anywhere. It's totally free and available right now on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Now, War Thunder isn't just about hopping into a vehicle and shooting. It's about the experience. The game's vehicle damage model is insanely detailed. Every component, from engines to fuel tanks and weapons, is modeled to react realistically to damage. It's not just about hit points. It's about strategy and understanding your vehicle's strengths and weaknesses. War Thunder's X-Ray View gives you all the gritty details, and it's this level of detail that puts you right in the middle of the most intense combat scenarios. Imagine taking control of over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships across 10 major nations. That's War Thunder. 
Here's the deal. For a limited time, if you sign up using my link in the pinned comment or the video description, you'll get a massive bonus pack available for new and returning players who haven't played in at least six months. This includes multiple premium vehicles, an exclusive vehicle decorator, Eagle of Valor, 100,000 Silver Lions, and seven days premium account across all platforms. So join the global community of over 70 million players and immerse yourself in War Thunder. And I'll see you on the battlefield. Georgia exists in an interesting geographic position in the United States. It's farther south than Virginia or the Carolinas, and thus farther away from the influence of the Northeast, and it's farther east than Mississippi or Alabama, two states that were derived from Georgia. For this reason, it's become emblematic of the South. And true to this moniker, its physical geography has a little bit of everything that makes up the greater southeastern United States. Beginning in the north, Georgia is home to the Appalachian Mountains, including the Blue Ridge Mountains, which are known for their stunning beauty and biodiversity. This region is characterized by its high elevation, dense forests such as the Chattahoochee Oconee National Forest, and a multitude of fast-flowing streams and rivers that originate in these mountains. While not in Georgia, the Great Smoky Mountains, the most visited national park in the country, is also part of the Blue Ridge Mountain Range. Moving southwards, the mountains give way to the Piedmont region, which serves as a transitional zone extending from the foothills of the mountains to the central part of the state. The Piedmont region is characterized by its rolling hills and is the most populous region in Georgia, hosting several major cities including Atlanta, the state capital. This area benefits from a rich soil that historically supported Georgia's wide variety of plantations, but has since become a major hub for business and industry due to its relatively central location and accessibility. Further south lies the Fall Line, an important geologic boundary where the hilly landscapes of Piedmont meet the coastal plain. The Fall Line is marked by a series of rapids and waterfalls that were historically significant for early settlers as the furthest point of navigation on many rivers. Cities in Georgia, such as Augusta, Macon, and Columbus, developed along this line, taking advantage of the water power for mills and factories. Beyond the Fall Line, the coastal plain dominates the southern half of the state stretching all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. This vast, flat region is characterized by its sandy soils and is an important agricultural zone, known for producing peanuts, pecans, and peaches, which have become one of the strongest symbols of Georgia. The region includes the Okafenoki Swamp, one of the largest and most pristine freshwater ecosystems in North America, offering a unique habitat for a wide range of wildlife. Finally, Georgia's eastern boundary is defined by its coastline along the Atlantic Ocean, featuring barrier islands, salt marshes, and estuaries that contribute to the state's rich biodiversity. The coastal area is significant for its ports, such as its largest one in Savannah, the 13th largest port in the country, which are vital for Georgia's trade with other states and countries. All of this geography combines to create the perfect blend of the southeast, but despite this eclectic geography, most Georgians live within a single, relatively small area of the state. The state of Georgia, perhaps best known for its southern culture, exhibits a pronounced demographic trend. A strong majority of its population resides in the Atlanta region, leaving much of the rest of the state sparsely populated. In fact, the Atlanta metro region is home to nearly 60% of the state's population, or 6.2 million people, on just a little over 10% of the state's land. And this is due to a combination of geographic and economic factors. First and foremost, the Atlanta metropolitan area serves as an economic powerhouse not just for the state of Georgia, but for the entire southeastern United States. For this reason, the city has acquired the nickname of the Capital of the South. The city hosts a multitude of corporate headquarters, including Delta Airlines, Coca-Cola, Home Depot, UPS, CNN, Equifax, and many more. This concentration of economic opportunities attracts people with a multitude of employment opportunities, leading to a continuous population boom in and around the city. And because of this concentration of businesses, infrastructure development has followed. Today, the city has become a major transportation hub with Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport serving as the busiest airport in the world. Major highways and a developed rail network have also facilitated business operations and connectivity. This has not only boosted the local economy, but has also made the area more accessible and attractive for both domestic and international migrants. But all of this economic and infrastructural development is due to a key decision made nearly 200 years ago. 
Atlanta's growth was significantly spurred by its selection as a railroad terminus in the 1830s, which established it as a commercial center. In this way, Atlanta is not that dissimilar to Chicago, which was also fueled in growth by becoming a major railway hub in the 1800s. In contrast, much of the rest of Georgia is characterized by rural landscapes, with agriculture playing a significant role in the economy, primarily southwest of Atlanta. North of Atlanta, there are significant barriers to development due to mountainous terrain and large forests. As a result, young people from the South, in particular, are drawn to the Atlanta metro area for education and employment opportunities, leading to a cycle of population decline and economic challenges in more rural areas. And that's not to say that Georgia has no other metropolitan areas. It does. But also, none of those metro areas are even one-tenth the size of Atlanta. Today, Georgia is led by the overwhelmingly dominant Atlanta metro region with 6.2 million people. This would be followed by Augusta with 611,000 people, Savannah with 404,000, Columbus with 328,000, Macon with 233,000, Athens with 215,000, and Gainesville with 203,000 people. But all of this begs the question, if Savannah was the first city in Georgia and has become a major port, then why didn't it, or another city on the Georgian coast, grow to become a major city in the United States? Unlike many other states with thriving coastal cities, such as New York with New York City, Massachusetts with Boston, and Florida with Miami, Georgia's coast has not given rise to a major urban center. This is despite Savannah being the oldest city in Georgia, giving it plenty of opportunities to grow into the role. But as it turns out, several factors contribute to this phenomenon, including geographic challenges, economic shifts, and historic circumstances. Geographically, the coast of Georgia is complicated to say the very least. Extensive marshlands and barrier islands are very prominent all along the state's coastline, which has historically made large-scale urban development challenging. This kind of natural landscape requires significant investment in infrastructure to support urban expansion, such as drainage, bridges, and roads to connect fragmented landscapes. But while the geography plays a role here, it's actually the historic economy of Georgia that would be the primary factor. Economically, while Savannah has been a crucial port city since the 1700s, the entire region's economy has historically centered around agriculture, particularly rice and cotton, which simply did not necessitate the same level of urban infrastructure and workforce as industrial cities in the North. As the United States industrialized, cities that grew into major urban centers typically did so through manufacturing and industry rather than agriculture, which remained the economic backbone of Savannah and the surrounding area. Furthermore, Historic circumstances also played a role. Savannah's growth was curtailed by events such as the Civil War, which devastated the local economy and infrastructure. Additionally, as the nation expanded westward, newer cities with more favorable geographic positions relative to the national transportation networks and economic activities emerged as major urban centers. This westward shift was on full display when, in 1830, nearly 100 years after Savannah's founding, Atlanta was determined to be a major railway hub for the South. This economic center of gravity diverted resources and attention away from Savannah and the potential development of a major city on the Georgian coast. Most Georgians live in Atlanta because, at the time of its founding, the United States selected it as a major railway terminus when the national focus was on Western expansion. This decision has had a cascading effect through time that only encouraged more people to move to the city. And unless something changes in the future, Atlanta will likely remain the dominant southern city for a long time. And remember, check out War Thunder, the sponsor of today's video. I hope you enjoyed learning more about Georgia and its geography. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. If you want to watch more of my videos, you can do so here. If you want to listen to the podcast, click here. Thanks for watching. See you next time.